Hey Taurus, how y'all doing? Welcome. We're going to be taking a look at your March general reading here. So fascinating meditation. I saw a moon and then I, I saw a cat sort of walk up towards the moon and it kind of felt like the movie Cats. Um, and then I heard the song Memories from Cats the Musical, but then I saw it shift and it turned into Superstition by Stevie Wonder. And the cat that I saw turned into the Cheshire cat from Alice in Wonderland and started just kind of boogieing down and using this like crescent moon as like a wheel to kind of dance all around. And it felt really wacky and wonderful. And then I saw it shift into a nine of pentacles. So <laughs> a wacky ride to get to the point. Um, a Nine of Pentacles feels like it is your uh, reigning energy for this month. Nine of Pentacles is very much about um, connecting in with the aspects of yourself that are unique in nature and understanding that your uniqueness is where your success lies, right? There's an aspect of this as well with the Nine of Pentacles. It's about entrepreneurship, about charting new roads, about working for yourself, about coming from an entrepreneurial mindset, right? Whatever situation that you're in. It's also about enjoying being in your own energy and company as well, which is really, really always wonderful. So let's go ahead and get what your animal energy is for the month. But I really, really like it. I love a Nine of Pentacles, honey. I do. I have a little soft spot for those who embody a nine of pentacles energy of of loving their energy and also being you know dream-minded as it were so we have the rabbit here so th this is fascinating let's talk about this about the medicine about to come through so first of all we are headed into march which we have the spring equinox right on march 21st now aligned with the spring equinox is that of rabbit energy right but let's talk about this for a moment because this is one of those animal energies it's this and the gazelle really this is and the gazelle's nine of pentacles interesting this is one of those energies that when it comes up i have to talk about the light and the shadow of it because it could really go either way <laughs> it's what it is on the light side rabbit energy is about abundance and fertility and multiplicity and joy right? And luxury, right? The shadow side of rabbit is being absolutely frozen in fear and thinking about the worst case scenario so much that it ends up being a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? The kind of the fable with rabbit is they're, they're in the forest talking to their friends about how one day they're just so absolutely positively sure that the eagle's going to swoop down and eat them that one day the eagle's flying by and it hears its chattering about how the eagle's going to eat them, alerts it to its location, is able to like feast on some rabbit, right? So it could go either way, you guys, and it's interesting that I'm getting this from you. It's, it's also along with that cat energy and then morphing into the Cheshire cat and the moon, I feel like humor as well is going to be a huge medicine for you this month and quite possibly the key to something. Your humor, your perspective, your unique take or view on things, right? Interestingly enough, let's go ahead and see what's going on for Taurus in the month of March. What's going on? Ooh, King of Cups. I can't tell you the number of times it's come up in this round. So King of Cups, oh, absolutely beautiful energy about emotional equilibrium, emotional intelligence, feeling really balanced from an emotional sphere, being connected in with your knowing and your intuition. This is also about energy responsibility <laughs> and being responsible for your own energy, about not taking on the feelings of other people as your own. That's what he's really, really good at. Queen, um, Queen of Cups. Her downfall is that she's so empathic that she often takes on other people's feelings, burdens, fears, everything as her own, which is not healthy, constructive, or helpful, right? The King of Cups, though, knows that what's his is his, and he doesn't need to take on the energy of other people in order to be there for them as a support system. I feel like there could be something in that for you, Taurus, <laughs> for sure. But I do feel like with the King of Cups as well, you're very sensitive to energy this month. Highly sensitive to energy this month, for sure. For sure. Actually, yeah, it's it's the month after that begins your birthday season, right? Okay. What else is going on? I keep wanting to talk about April. Like, I know we're doing March, but there's something about April. Ooh, beautiful. Okay. <clears throat> this is... 
interesting and making sense. So six, six of pentacles here, right? This is about reciprocity. This is about equal give and take. This is about being in mutually beneficial partnerships and relationships and also the relationship that you have, but of course, with yourself. Now, what's interesting about this is here's the role of the benefactor, right? Larger than life. And then here's the receiver, the giver, the receiver. Which one do you identify with more? First thing that comes to your mind, do you identify with the giver or the receiver more? Whichever one that you identify with, you're being asked this month to flip it. If you identify more with the giver, you're being asked to allow yourself to receive. If you identified more with the receiver, you're being asked to be in a place of giving without any expectation around that. Fascinating, no? Interesting, too, because we have the King of Cups coming in, which is about, you know, keeping your feelings and emotions as your own without feeling the need to take on other people's stuff or burdens or whatever that is. So emotional equilibrium and alignment with reciprocity within your given situation, right? There's a balance that wants to happen here. I can feel it. I feel like you are being called to balance and alignment, right? It's interesting. Interesting. But, you know, the water and the earth of it, earth of it all as well, especially because rabbit is earth too. Um, I do feel like there's something here around grounding yourself so that you can move forward towards your highest and best potential. I feel like there's been a delay around something or something that seems to be taking its time uh, getting to you in some way. Or maybe your priorities have shifted. But I, I feel like it's an inkling of an invitation to go like, hey, rabbit energy... Could it be that your abundance is on the other side of your fear? Something to think about. So now we have the page of cups. <laughs> Beautiful. You know, this is very much about enjoying the present moment that you're in and really approaching life with the sweetness of a child, right? Everything is a wonder. Everything has the potential for infinite possibilities. Now, what I'm really, really drawn to here and why this is so fun, look, we have the king here, which is the fully realized version of the cups uh, of the courts, right? Court keys of the cup suit, right? And then we have this give and take. You're being asked to switch positions, right? Which And then go into the first position. This is last position, first position. In the middle, we flip our scripts. I feel like you're being asked to align yourself and either allow yourself to be guided or taken care of or flip it and step into a position of caring for others or guiding others. It's you're being asked to switch roles this month and i feel like that's lining up too with the rabbit energy either being shadow or light right interesting king of cups king of cups is five of cups in reverse so in the upright five of cups is very much about your perspective it's how you see things it's about are you focused on what's been and what what has been lost or are you focused on what could be Right? Are you focused on this capybara swimming away from the scene of the crime here? Or are you focused on the cap this poor capybara that has passed, you know, into that good night over there on the bank, right? But the fact that this is in reverse with the King of Cups, I feel like there's a beautiful energy here around regained perspective and regained hope and enlightenment. But I really, I, I keep hearing it, y'all, with the rabbit energy. I really feel like this could go either way. So I feel like it's of the utmost importance to do emotional self-care and balance and keep your equilibrium about you this month. I feel like things are going to be really going on this month, for sure. Not just for you, for the collective, but there really is a lot going on and you're really being asked to ground yourself and keep your perspective healthy and whole, okay? It, it really feels important. Again, with that rabbit, light or shadow, right? Six of Pentacles. Ha ha! I love it. Six of Pentacles is the Four of Wands. Let's talk about why this is brilliant. So Four of Wands is about happiness, joy, happy home and family, right? The wands were the realm of the actions we take, uh, usually around the work that we love to do or pursuits that we're passionate about. But here's why it's brilliant. Remember how we were talking about switching the role, right? This is the Bower Bird. Now let's talk about what makes the Bower Bird so unique and special. So this is the male Bower Bird. And what makes him unique and special is that he, out of all the bird species, he actually builds the nest. See the little like engagement ring here? He builds the nest and then has the nest 
B, it's like mating ritual to attract the female. So he builds this really nice crib and then he like waits for the ladies to like notice how amazing that crib is. And he's like, hey, do you want to go see like the house that I've already built for you even before I knew you? Because that's my level of commitment and foresight. Do you see how that can be a reversal of roles when we think about the um, sort of the, uh, you know, quote, traditional, um, outdated role of the woman within the household? It's her who makes the home, right? The homemaker, the female, right? But then we have the male energy who's the homemaker here. And aren't we talking about switching roles? There's something you're being asked to do differently or ask for help around or shift shift what you normally do into the other shoe or perspective or stance. There's something in that for you and it feels really important. As an example, let's say that at work you're used to like kind of doing everything for everyone. You're kind of in a position where people are always coming to you for advice and you're always giving it and you're always doing that little bit of extra work and you can't say no and you always work late even though you don't get paid overtime, whatever that is. You're being asked to flip that role for this month and ask others to stay late for you. Ask others to do that extra bit of work so that you don't have to. There's something in making that change in choice that is going to shake up your vibration and align you to one of self worth so you can manifest what you actually deserve okay there's something about that another example let's say that you're in a home situation where you are the one who does all the housework and you are the one in that you know you just you make the dinner you take care of the kids you make sure everything's clean and you go to work and you do all this stuff and then you have a partner who who does less because that's just kind of how it is right switch that, flip that script, honey. That's what I'm hearing for this month. Flip that script and say, hey, um, I would like to ask you to be responsible for X, Y, and Z this month. You're going to pick up the kids and you're going to do the dishes and you're going to make dinner. And um, that's what I would like for this month. How about it? If they have a problem with that, then that is something that you need to notice and know. But there's an aspect of this really allowing yourself to do things differently. I I can't even sit here and tell you exactly why that is. Like, I'm not getting a clear read about like, and this will do that and do this so that this happens. But there's something in you willing to do something differently or switch roles in some way. Because on, on the other foot, like, let's say that your partner's the one or your or your coworker is the one who's always doing the most, right? And take notice of that and say, you know what? You work really hard or you're always doing this. Let me do this for you. You know what? Take Saturday off. You're always coming at, take Saturday off. I got this, right? There's something in switching it up in that way that is going to have some really beneficial results. But again, I cannot sit here and tell you exactly what those are. I don't think you're supposed to know. I think it's just about inviting you to engage with this energy from that perspective, right? There's something about it. It, it, it frees up, it clears the path for something. Page of Cups. Six of Swords. Trans this is my favorite sword suit. Transition to calmer waters. Taking a chance and trusting wherever you're going to land is in your highest and best place. I, I do feel like inner peace, right? I do feel like with this, y'all, there's a very distinct energy around are you willing to take a risk on yourself and what you really desire and dream of? Because there's an aspect coming forward of this Nine of Pentacles coming back around here. Right, Because it feels like there wants to be an emphasis on you, what you desire, and what you're all about. Can you connect back in from a Page of Cups perspective about what really matters to you and what you really love to do? And can you take a chance on yourself and be the sugar glider and just really go for it from a place of abundance mindset and not fear because this is this is these are counter energies let's look at these these are counter energies right this sugar glider is jumping trusting that it's going to land on the hilt of the sword and not on the blade right rabbit energy right on one side this rabbit's going yeah i'm gonna land on the hilt too or maybe i'll just land in the water and that'll be all right or i'll hang out of the tree or wh whatever man but i'm gonna go for it the other half of it's like I'm going to hit that sword. Oh, I'm going to hit that sword. Oh, that one's going to cut me in half. Uh, 
right? So it's, it's really about being mindful of how your thoughts are things and how they can really absolutely dictate your reality. But there's something here that you're being called to, to do differently or see differently. And it's, it's, about this aspect of you that really wants to be more fully pronounced or realized in some way. Maybe for some of you, this is about an idea that you have. Uh, maybe it's a work context. Maybe it's personal. Maybe it's a passion pursuit, whatever it is. Maybe there's an idea that you have that you haven't completely brought to the forefront out of fear or out of busyness or whatever reason. And you're being asked to take a chance and take a risk, right? Page of Cups it, right? And look at it from that childlike perspective of the only thing that could go wrong would be me not taking a chance. Remember, we regret the things that we don't do a lot more than the things that we do. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's coming forward here for you. You're being asked to, to really step into your own independence, into your own power, and trust that you are able to manifest what you desire on the other side of any fear or self-perceived limitations. Now, the rabbit also coincides with a nine of swords energy from the tarot, which speaks of, yes, nightmares and anxieties and things keeping you up, but it also speaks of dream time messages. So you could definitely be getting some very interesting, helpful, illuminating messages to you in your dream time. Always a good idea to keep a dream, dream journal by your bed whenever we have like a nine of swords come up. If you can't remember the details of your dream when you wake up, I find this to be enormously helpful. I took a dream work workshop recently and I, this is what I took away that was really amazing was that even if you can't remember the details, just connect into the feeling of the dream when you wake up. So if you wake up, you're trying to remember it, but you can't, it's like, ah, oh, it's a detail. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Well, don't worry about the details. How do I feel? Mm. I feel hopeful. Oh, I feel hopeful. Yeah, I feel really hopeful. That dream felt like a message around, I'm hope. Oh yeah, that's what happened. Right. So, so connect into the dream memory recall from a place of feeling and then write it down from there or meditate on it from there but it feels very important you have the potential to manifest some beautiful things on the other side of your fear okay and i do feel like it's related to like a nine of pentacles enterprise situation right it's really beautiful you absolutely got this taurus um let's go ahead and get an oracle for y'all shall we i'm feeling like the colette baron read yes let's do this Oracle for Taurus. Uh, Y'all. The Desert Prince. Survival False Promises. I gotta tell you that th this is directly lining up for me about the reciprocity aspect of willing to change it up and do something differently or trust that someone else can handle what you handle. And the rabbit with the light and the shadow and the fear. Survival false promises. I want to also point out this like lion aspect here, this lioness aspect, right? The, the desert prince has this perspective of I, I, I may not make it. I really got to do what I got to do to get by and survive. But I don't have the time or the energy to dream big because I'm just trying to make it through. If that is the energy that we can all be in that energy from time to time. Life is really intense. But if you find yourself in that energy alert yourself to the reality that you can ask for help and you don't have to be. You can ask for help. You can ask for assistance. You can choose to go about doing things differently, right? So that you 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 can switch up your reality and your experience, right? Remember, like attracts like, right? So if you're in a reality, if you're in a routine, if you're in an energy that you don't particularly love, it's your responsibility to get clear about how you may be making some fear-based choices or just kind of getting by to get along or whatever it is and how to get clear on why that is, what the inner driver behind it is and to allow yourself to break through that glass ceiling of fear, right? To the other side of like a true potential and newness, right? Are you seeing the water or are you seeing like the dry desert, right? He's like, I'm trying to survive. There's all this body of water like behind him if he just turned around and like asked for a goblet or, you know, just used his hands, whatever. <laughs> this has a lot to do with your perspective and how you see things this month. You got five of cups, right? Yeah. This has a lot to do with your perspective and how you see things this month. You have the potential to manifest some really beautiful things that, that feel akin to a nine of pentacles energy. But you're being asked to realign your perspective and ask for help and allow yourself to be helped or flip it. Help others. 
give of yourself to others if others are pulling extra weight and that is going to align you to something that is really beautiful as well that you wouldn't if you just kept doing things in the way that you're doing it within the status quo or getting by to get by right but again desert prince doesn't see the water align your perspective from a place of of health and abundance and gratitude gratitude is the key it's always the key remember what i always say queen of pentacles for life the more we are grateful for what we already have, the more we manifest to be grateful for. That is it. All right. You guys absolutely got this. I am wishing you guys a most blessed, a most blessed March. A quick reminder, I do have a new-ish Facebook group. Uh, it's for metaphysically minded people, intuitive people, psychic curious people uh, to get together in a safe, inclusive space and ask questions, share stories. It's been a beautiful way for me to connect with you guys personally as well. And I would love to see you guys over there. The link to sign up is in the description box below. And with that being said, please remember to like, share, and subscribe. I would so appreciate that. Leave me a comment in the comments below. Let me know how y'all doing. And yeah, just thank you. Thank you so much for being here. And as always, and most of all, thank you for being you. And be well. Until next time.